In the publication of his apostolic exhortation, Amoris Laetitia, The Joy of Love, Pope Francis has given us a very timely document that deserves our careful and prayerful attention. So opening statement, but I welcome any uh, questions or comments you might have. The document certainly does not um, condone marriage between um, homosexual partners, um, and it makes it very clear that nothing can compare with the ideal of marriage as created by God, as one union, man and woman, a lifetime permanent exclusive union. So uh, even though the document is very long, as, as you can see, um, it's 200 and some pages and 300 and some paragraphs, it's a very long and nuanced and detailed document. Um, it cannot address every issue, cannot address every topic that, that comes along. The document is meant to be a very positive, joyful, affirming proclamation about marriage and family life as we, as we have it from God. I should explain, the bishops, we just received our copy of this yesterday. So uh, I have to be very clear about saying that I have not read the whole document yet. I've read about it. I've read some summaries and some questions and answer formats that have been given to us. So I haven't read the whole document. I guess my first reaction was that it was very long. Um, who do you see that might uh, sit on this task force? At this point, really, I have no idea, except to say that we'll be a mixed uh, committee, including clergy and laity. Certainly, we need to have some uh, members of the uh, laity involved, the married couples, uh, singles, divorced people, perhaps. Uh, those who have all the experiences that Pope Francis talks about in his letter. And the purpose of the task force will be to uh, unpack everything that's in the Holy Father's letter to help us understand what's in there and to offer us some practical recommendations going forward as to what the diocese can do to um, better implement and react to what our Holy Father has done. The document, of course, is, has been said uh, by others. It's, it's not primarily uh, a doctrinal statement. It doesn't recast the teachings of the church, the moral teachings of the church. We should be very clear that um, fornication is still a sin, and adultery is still a sin, and homosexual activity is still a sin, all in the objective order. I think what the Pope is saying, however, is that in situations where people find themselves in, in those circumstances, we need to walk with them, we need to try to understand them, and, and help them to be integrated into the life of the church, and not excommunicate them. Uh, he has a very telling line. He says the church, the role of the church is, um, is to inform conscience and not to replace it. In other words, we have to help people make good decisions about this issue and, and all these issues. While we cannot discount the teaching of Christ in the church, we have to accompany people as they deal with this on an individual level. So in the short term, I'm not sure that it will have any noticeable impact in the short term because certainly people uh, who are described in the document have been welcomed in the church already. Um, but I think in the long run, it will have a tremendous impact. As I said, it's a blueprint for us going forward. This is a real challenge for us. It challenges a lot of preconceptions, but I think it's filled with um, riches and opportunities and blessings if we approach it properly.